All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be talking about how to solve nonlinear systems that have a linear and a quadratic equation within it. We're going to have to think back to how to solve linear systems of equations because we're going to have a very, very similar process through it. We're going to be going through solving by graphing, how to solve by substitution, and how to solve by elimination, just like we would with a system of linear equations, except now the only difference is that we're going to be having a linear with a quadratic. So let's get to it. Again, our essential question is, is how can we solve a system of two equations when one is linear and one is quadratic? Here we go. All right, so in this first example, we're gonna be solving this system of equations. We have a linear and a quadratic by graphing. And it's as, as simple as that. We're just gonna be graphing these two equations and see if we have a point of intersection or maybe even two, who knows? So let's let's first graph that linear equation and i'm going to do that in blue because it's x plus two and i want to do it in blue look at that i'm a poet and you didn't even know it <laughs> can make it rhyme at any time whoop, whoop. all right so we have y is equal to x plus two i know that my y intercept is two and i and i can just graph it because it has a slope of one so i go up one over one or down one left one and I'm just going to have a rough line with it. Not bad. Not bad. All right. So now we've graphed the linear equation. We have to graph the quadratic equation. So to graph the quadratic equation, we have to think about how to graph a quadratic equation. Well, we need the vertex. And the vertex, again, is equal to negative b over 2a, right? And when we plug in the values, our b value is 2, so it's going to be negative 2 over 2 times 1, which is 2. So I get negative 1. That's the x value. So that's going to be our axis symmetry as well as the x value. That's, let's jot down that axis of, of symmetry. Great. So it's going to be somewhere on that axis of symmetry is going to be the vertex. That's awesome to know. So now we're going to plug in that negative 1. We plug it in. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 plus, now negative 2 is going to be negative 1. So I'm going to have the vertex of negative 1, negative 1. All right. Now we just need to choose one or two x values to the left and, and to the right. But remember, a, a parabola or a, a parabola, it's symmetrical. So what we do to the right-hand side, we can do the left-hand side, so long as we're staying in the same distance away from that axis of symmetry. So looking at it, I'm going to go to the right, and hopefully you see why. The next x value over to the right is 0. So if I plug in 0, well, 0 squared plus 2 times 0, well, I get 0. And using my axis of symmetry, I know I'm going to have a point there. And now for the quadratic e equation again, I have 1, but that's not really going to be enough right here. So I'm going to go 1 more to the right. So I have 1. If I plug 1 in, I have 1 squared, which is 1, plus 2 times 1, that's 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. So I graph 1, comma, 3. And hopefully you might have noticed something here. Well, if I graph this and I connect it, whoops, missed it a little bit. That's eh, okay. You might have noticed that two things happened. At here and at here, we have points of intersection. We have the quadratic and that linear equation intersecting each other. So those are going to be our answers. So our answer, or really our answers, because we have two of them, is going to be negative 2, comma 0, and then we're going to have 1, comma 3, because those are where the quadratic and the linear equations intersected. Just like we did with linear systems of, of equations, we look for the points of intersection. But now that we have a quadratic and a linear equation, there can be two points of intersection. Sometimes there's only going to be one. Hey, sometimes there's going to be none. But now we have the possibility of having two points of intersection. All right, all right. Great job. Let's, uh, let's move on. Here we go, here we go. So I want you to try out solving this system by graphing on your own. And when you're ready to move on, please resume the video as the answers are going to be in the next slide. All right, if you're listening to my voice, that means that you are ready to move on and you, you want to check out your answers. Boom! Shakalaka. There you go. All right, that is how we graph systems of nonlinear equations. 
we graph the linear equation and then we graph the quadratic equation. And guess what? You're doing so, so well, folks. Smiley face. All right. So now we're going to be going on how to solve by substitution. And just like we have before, we need to think about our laws or our rules of substitution. We have to isolate a variable, then substitute that value into the other equation. Well, what you're going to see a lot is a lot of these systems are set up for substitution where we can all where we will normally not always but normally have a variable already isolated and typically it's going to be your y value so notice that i have y is equal to x squared plus x minus one and i have a y value in the other equation so all i'm going to do is i'm going to substitute in those values so we're going to have x nope I want to do that in, let's go blue, why not? So we're now going to have x squared plus x minus 1 is equal to negative 2x plus 3. And now we need to solve this for x. So we want to get our x's and in this case our constants over to one side because we're, we want to factor, maybe complete the square, or who knows, even use a quadratic formula. So we want to have it equal to zero because now we're dealing with a quadratic. So in order to do that, I have to add 2x to both sides. And at the same time, I'm going to subtract 3. Hopefully, you're bearing with me here while I do two things at once. Yeah, yeah. All right. So now we get x squared. 1x plus 2x is 3x. Negative 1 minus 3 is going to be minus 4. That's equal to zero. Can this be factored? Yes, it can. We can factor this. We want 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. We want factors of negative 4 that will add up to 3. Well, we can use positive 4 and negative 1. So this becomes x plus 4, x minus 1, that's equal to 0. So we're going to have two possible solutions here. We're going to have that x is equal to negative 4 and x is equal to 1. That's great. But now we need to take both of these values and plug it into one of the equations to find its corresponding y value. Just like we did with linear systems, we take our x and we plug it in to find the y, or we have the y plugged in to find the x. We have two instances here, so we have to do it twice. So I'm going to do it over on the right-hand side. Let's, let's separate. Personally, I like using the uh, linear equation just because it's a little bit more straightforward. Um, it's a little bit less work to do than plug it into the quadratic, but hey, six to one, half a dozen the other, you're, you should get the same answer because it's the point of intersection. So if I'm using negative two x plus three, whoops, y equals, I'm now going to take this value of negative four and plug it in. So it's going to be y is equal to negative 2, I'll do it in red, times negative 4 plus 3. So I get that y is negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. Positive 8 plus 3 is going to be 11. Therefore, one answer is negative 4, comma, 11. Now we got to do it again. y is equal to negative 2x plus 3. I now need to use x being 1. Plug it in. So it be y is equal to negative 2, again I'll do it in red, times 1 plus 3. So we get negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, negative 2 plus 3 is going to be 1. Therefore we get 1 comma 1. And those are our two points of intersection, negative 4 comma 11 and 1 comma 1. Great job folks, here we go, here we go, let's, uh, let's keep this ball rolling. Here we go. Now we have elimination, my personal favorite. Now, with elimination, here is what's going to get a little bit tricky if the equations are not set up for you. And typically they will be, but here's my best tip. Always have the equations, the linear and the quadratic, written in its stand in in its uh I actually I can't say standard form because standard form is different for linear. You want to have your quadratic written in standard and you want to have your linear written in slope intercept because what's going to happen is you're going to have y isolated all by itself. So notice in equation one, we have y is equal to x squared minus 3x minus 2. That's in the quadratic standard form. 
Okay, and now we have y equals a negative 3x minus 8. That's written in slope-intercept form. Okay, so tips. Or Q-tips. Here we go. Um, we want the quadratic. And standard. And we want the linear. Uh, I'm out of room in slope intercept form. Pardon the uh, the appendsmanship. It's very difficult to write with this tablet. So we want at y to be isolated, right? So we want y isolated. Okay, because what's going to happen is back when we had systems of equations and we had elimination, you were typically told you always want to add the two equations together. That way. Uh, the variables are, are going to cancel out, right? If you have opposite terms like 4x and negative 4x, those are going to cancel out. Well, for here, we want to subtract. And you're saying, what? That, that kind of goes against what we've been doing. I know, I know. But for here, we want to subtract because we want to get that y value gone. And what happens is if we subtract the first equation minus the second equation, if I put a, a minus there, and this is a little bit informal, um, we're going to have technically y minus y on the left and then we're going to have x squared minus 3x minus 2 that's the first equation minus now negative 3x minus 8 over on the left what's y minus y well now it's zero and we're going to be left with a quadratic term x squared minus zero squared. So it's going to be x squared, okay, negative 3x minus negative 3x. Well, those are the same thing. So that goes to zero. So for right now, I'm going to write plus zero x. For right now, I'm, I'm going to get rid of it, okay? And then we do negative 2 minus negative 8. Well, negative 2 minus negative 8. So I'm saying negative 2 plus 8, so we get plus 6. So really, we get x squared plus 6 is equal to 0, and we can solve this here, okay? Um, we're going to have to subtract 6 on both sides. Negative 6 is equal to x squared, and then when we take that square root of it, we're going to technically see that, whoa, 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 there's a negative underneath that radical, and we can't have that. So this is going to yield a no solution because we can't have that negative sign underneath the radical in algebra 2 you can you're going to have imaginary numbers it's going to be um, plus or minus 6i but for algebra 1 purposes this is going to be a no solution meaning that these are not going to intersect um, so these two equations don't intersect which is which is sad but it's okay um, just wanted to show you that there are times where you're going to have a no solution, and we can tell that um, a lot of the times through elimination and, and graphing. Um, but hopefully this was helpful. I have some problems I'm going to ask that you try on your own. Here we go. So four problems. Uh, please try and solve the top two by substitution and then the bottom two by elimination. If you have any questions, please reach out. The answers are going to be on the next slide, though, so just pause it. Answer these four, and then resume when you're ready to check your answers. All right, folks, here, here are the answers. Um, for six and seven, they were a little bit complicated, and I found that it was tougher to type, so I had to go to a different platform to do that. Um, but those are the answers for four, five, six, and seven. Hopefully, this was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I'm so proud of you. Keep up the great work, folks. Have a good one.